So, uh, I actually, this CREP network, I implemented it uh, using uh, MXNet and Gluon. So we can have a quick look at how it looks. So I'll just go over the high level uh, organization of the notebook. So first we need to install uh, MXNet. MXNet is a deep learning library. It has a very efficient implementation and asynchronous backend processing so that the GPU is utilized at its best. Um, so we first go through the data download. So we download uh, the, the task at hand is to classify reviews of uh, Amazon products in order to try to guess what type of product it was about. For example, if you say, I love this book, well, it was about a book, obviously. But sometimes it's less uh, less obvious. For example, if you say it worked straight out of the box, oh, well, maybe it's electronics, maybe it's home and kitchen, you don't know. Um, then once the data set is downloaded, we load it in memory. We're going to uh, pre-process it. Remember the quantization step where we uh, transform each document into a one note encoded version. And we have our training and testing data sets. We're going to put them into data loaders. So in MXNet, data loaders are these very efficient um, loaders for data. So you can distribute the pre-processing of your data across uh, many different workers so that it happens in parallel to the computation. You prefetch the data and then you feed it to the GPU. Then we create a network. We use the same uh, parameters as the ones in the, in the paper. So you, you see it's very simple with Gluon. Uh, we define a few parameters and then we just sequentially add all temporal convolutions, max pooling, convolution, max pooling. You can see each of them is activated with a ReLU activation. Then we have our flattening layer followed by our dense layer, our dropout, another dense layer, dropout, and the final dense layer. We initialize the parameters. We hybridize, so that's a specific to Gluon, where the computational graph is cached. So it's much faster, and it's using, um, it's still using the Gluon imperative declaration, which is really nice. So we use the softmax um, uh, and cross entropy laws. Basically, we are performing a, a classification. So we want to maximize the fact that the right class has been uh, found. Uh, for our optimizer, we're going to use the SGD um, optimization, which is a stochastic gradient with a momentum. So momentum is basically if your uh, gradient is going in the right direction, then you increase the value of your gradient because it means yeah you're on the right track. So it speeds up uh, convergence of training. Okay, then we have the training. We get uh, for for the number of epochs that we have, we get the data, the review, and the label of the review from the data loader. We load them onto the GPU, compute the output, compute the loss, send the backward propagation uh, of the loss through the network, and then we update the weights. And basically, we do that until we reach convergence. Then we can export uh, the model and we can use that the exported model to deploy it. And we'll see in a minute actually um, that you can build a web app uh, out of this train model. OK. So what are the results? Uh, how does it compare to the traditional NLP? So what you can see, this is from the paper itself, um, on lower uh, number for data set with like smaller number of elements, the traditional dataset techniques actually outperform the deep neural networks one. But as soon as you move to like the higher number, uh, like the Amazon review uh, dataset, for example, then the uh, character level CNN completely outperform the traditional techniques, like by by a big margin. You can see if it's interesting. You see this TH mean theater. It means that the data has been uh, augmented. So how do you augment data? In images, it's 
pretty obvious. You do some color jittering, you apply some blurring, some different type of uh, noise. You can do some uh, random zoom and crop. You can do some rotation. But for text, how do you do that? So for text, you can have humans rephrasing the example. It's very expensive and time consuming, but you get um, basically more example like that. Or you can use uh, synonyms from a, a like a series of, of words. So for example, we have the sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, which contains all the letters of the alphabet. But we can see how we can augment it to get a new example, which kind of means the same stuff. So you randomly select some words, you get uh, for each word the synonyms. For example, uh, brown, you have hazel, brunette, chestnut, for jumps, you have leaps, springs, bounds, hops. Um, and then you randomly select one of them and you end up with a new sentence. The swift brunette fox leaps over the slow full pop. So obviously this might not appear in any text except then uh, this uh, plantation, but doing that usually increase uh, uh, recall and precision by uh, a couple of percent. So conclusion, you need a large data set, very large data set, millions of examples. Uh, I'm going to show like a live demo of this uh, network uh, that I trained on the Amazon review to classify seven different uh, categories. So if you look at uh, this box where I'm going to enter um, a review, for example, say, I love this book. Obviously, it's a book. Uh, Great album, uh, beautiful voice. I didn't even need to say that. It's, it's a CD and vinyl. But if I do something a little bit more in between, for example, uh, I loved the atmosphere and the characters. Well, yeah, it can be a book, but also could be a movie, right? So you can see algorithm is a bit imbalanced. So you can, for example, precise what you say. A really good director. Oh, now he knows it's a movie. So you can see, you can play around and kind of see where the boundary lies between each category. So feel free to try it out. Uh, that's the URL. And I'll touch for a minute about how you can deploy your own deep learning networks because that's something that's not always talked about. Uh, people focus a lot on training, which is very interesting. But when you want to train a network, it's not only to get the maximum, like best result. You want to, to use that like in production. So the workflow I used, and I'm happy to share it with you, is I developed my model using a Jupyter notebook or Jupyter lab. Once you're happy with it, you move it to a GPU instance where you can train very fast, um, like in a matter of uh, minutes or hours, your network. Once your network is um, ready, you can Containerize it. So with MXNet, you can use MXNet model server, which provides uh, ready to go uh, Docker container solutions to deploy your model behind a, a, a web API. You upload your container to a container registry, like Docker Hub, for example, and then you deploy your container behind an Elastic Container Service. So you can do it yourself or, or use your favorite cloud provider. Because this gives you auto scaling, which is uh, really nice. And the dependency of your deep, uh, no, uh, deep learning frameworks are contained into your container. So that's people, if you have already tried to install a deep, no, deep learning frameworks, you, sometimes it can be complicated. Uh, it's gotten better over the years, but to get the right version of uh, uh, OpenBlast or, or CUDA can be tricky. Then you put your web API behind the load balancer, and here you go. You get your your model, so you can do SSL termination, SSL termination, for example, at the load balancer. So you, you can um, send a request, love this book, get back a response. Uh, it was about a book. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, so that's how you can um, deploy a model. So a few advanced use cases where you want to combine um, convolutional when you want to apply a convolution in more like advanced or trickier tasks. So lots of people have combined 
uh, CNNs, which are very good at feature featureization and feature extraction with um, LSTM, which are recurrent networks, which are good at capturing long-term dependencies. So for example, for videos, so the frames of the video are passed through uh, CNN, and then because there is a temporal order, each frame comes after the other, then this result is passed to an LSTM. You can also use uh, 3D convolutions if you want. So you have some um, test tasks, for example, uh, text classification that was used for like uh, CNN and LSTM combined for audio tasks. So on the right, you can't really see here, but it's uh, taken from a, a paper um, how to do uh, language detection. So to detect which language someone is speaking. And I have actually done a, if you check my GitHub, I've done um, how to do OCR using uh, a conventional neural network, uh, LSTM, and then the CTC loss. And you can OCR cursive actually with this method and it works pretty well. So another advanced use case is the um, speed generation with WaveNet, which is when you want to generate uh, from text, you want to generate audio that sounds like a human. So uh, if I, I mentioned it earlier that people used to do that in the frequency space and take this frequency representation as an image and use convolution on, onto that. What they did, uh, DeepMind, they use the, the raw waveform, they use dilated convolution to, dilated causal convolution in order to capture um, a very wide receptive field. So you can see um, how it's built here. So it's causal because only what happened before is taken into account in the convolution. So only basically half of it, rather than centering it, it's kind of aligned with the right, uh, right hand side. So at each level, you dilate more your convolution and kind of uh, lets you look further away without going super deep. Especially important here because the samples are at 30,000 like um, hertz, so which is like 30,000 sample per second. Okay, so here you see how it works in uh, auto regressive fashion. So each the previous input is used to create the uh, the next output, and then it's added to the input in an auto regressive uh, fashion. So that's how you can generate uh, audio. So on top of that, you have the the network is conditioned on some text that it needs to to say, um, and then it's also using the previous input to produce the next output. So in summary, we learned about uh, convolutions. We applied them to textual data, and we saw that we can use um, world level representation or character level representation. We can actually use also byte level representation. We studied in depth the CREP architecture from uh, Jang and uh, et al. Uh, and we saw that how you can implement it uh, using MXNet Gluon and how you can deploy it um, to the internet. And then we, we learn about more advanced use case uh, where you can mix convolutional neural networks and other types of networks or use more advanced type of convolutions. Well, that was it. Uh, thank you everybody for listening. And if you have any question, you can reach me uh, on LinkedIn or you can send me an email and I'll, I'll do my best to, to answer or just leave a comment.